Hello everyone, we're going to check out the new WAN 2.2 Fun Reward Laura. Now, if you've played around with WAN 2.1 before, you might have noticed that Fun Reward Loras were already implemented there too. There are two models you can use, HPS and MPS. Right now, there are two Reward Loras available for video generation in both WAN 2.2 and WAN 2.1. As I just mentioned, one of the popular ones used in WAN 2.1 was Fusion X. If you scroll down to the Hugging Face page, you'll see that Fusion X actually merged MPS as one of its components, and that helped improve motion, aesthetics, and overall video quality. So, what's a reward model? Well, it's basically how we tell the AI what we prefer, our human preferences, so it knows how we want the videos to look when we generate them. Now, HPS has some interesting updates. The current version is 2.1, and that's what's showing on the official GitHub repo. The repo says HPS v2, but the latest update is actually v2.1, trained on a higher quality dataset, so it's better than the 2.0 version we used in WAN 2.1. When it comes to comparing HPS and MPS, there's no real which one is better. It's all about your personal preference, which kind of motion you like more in your videos. I've generated some info using Quen3 language models to break down the facts and explain how both reward models work. First of all, both improve motion, something we've definitely needed. If you've generated AI videos before, you've probably seen unnatural movements, like a guy walking, but the camera moving in the wrong direction. With reward LoRa models, we can use human preferences to teach the AI what good or bad motion looks like for specific actions, like walking. Both HPS version 2 and MPS can do this. They're also both used as benchmarks for image and video generation quality. HPS was developed by an independent researcher in the open source community. MPS, on the other hand, was created by Kwai Shou, the parent company of Kling AI. Both models help with better prompt adherence, motion alignment, and aesthetic improvements in video generation. In terms of architecture, both use OpenClip VIT14, but HPS uses the H-14 variant, while MPS uses the L-14, fine-tuned differently. One key difference is language support. HPS only supports English prompts, while MPS supports multiple languages, including Chinese, aligned with Asian aesthetics, and multilingual inputs. Now, when it comes to video focus, which is what we're looking at today, HPS is trained on video frames, but it scores each frame individually. MPS, however, is built end-to-end -end for videos. It looks at the entire video as a whole, evaluating temporal consistency and how well the motion flows across the entire sequence. So when we apply these reward loris, we're not just improving individual frame quality, we're enhancing the overall motion and flow of the video based on human preferences. In the Hugging Face repo for the WAN 2.2 Fun Reward LoRa, if you go to the file versions, you'll see four files, HPS High and Low Noise and MPS High and Low Noise. For WAN 2.2, both the High and Low Noise models need to be injected into the video generation process, so you need both files, a pair, for each model to run properly. Coming up, I'll show some video comparisons. Well, not exactly comparisons, but side-by-side -side examples to show the differences between the two reward loris. There's no absolute answer on which one is better. It really just depends on your personal preference and the kind of motion you like in your videos. In Comfy UI, I've built a simple text-to-video workflow, but I've duplicated it into three rows with different settings. All three use the same prompt connected to the text encoder. In the first row, I'm only using the Light X 2 v LoRa. In the second row, I've added Light x 2 v with the MPS Reward LoRa, both high and low noise. And in the last row, I'm using HPS version 2.1. Right now, with WAN 2.2, you can mix and match different high and low noise models, which wasn't possible in 2.1, where you could only pick one reward model per generation. So there are way more combinations now. To make it easier to identify, I've labeled each video in the output, one says MPS, one says HPS. As you can see, all three use the same prompt. I used the Mariah Laura and tried to set up a jumping motion for the character. With the same prompt and seed number, you can already see two different motion styles. 
From my experience, MPS tends to create faster, more sudden motions, while HPS gives a more cinematic, stunt-like feel, with enhanced camera angles too. Now, when I also enable the top row, the one with only Light X 2V LoRa, you'll see the difference even more. Let me enable this group of custom nodes. This one only uses Light X 2V LoRa to speed up the sampling process and bring it back to the 3 video player. Again, all settings are the same. 480p resolution, 81 frames long, same seed, same sampling steps, same flow value, everything shared across all three. The only thing I changed was the LoRa settings. I also set the shift number higher than usual. Normally it's 8, or sometimes 5 if you want more static motion, but here I set it to 10 to allow more movement. I kept the model loader groups pretty basic, nothing fancy. For sampling, I used the standard K Sampler Advanced, with 50 50 sampling steps for both high and low noise. And here are the generated videos. Let's take a look at the first row Light X 2V only. As you can see, the motion is kind of odd. The character jumps off the wall, but then just hops to another corner without proper movement, knees down, awkward landing. It's very unnatural, especially for a stunt action. But when we look at the MPS and HPS results, it gets better. With MPS after the jump, the character takes a step, there's more continuity. You can tell it's planning its next move. And with HPS, around the five second mark, you see a more cinematic stunt, one hand over, climbing to the other side of the wall. It feels more like a real action sequence. And personally, I think the camera motion is more enhanced with HPS. Now here's the cool part. The LoRa loader is actually pretty flexible. You don't have to use the same model for high and low noise. For example, I have MPS for both right now, but you could use MPS for high noise and HPS for low noise. That'll give you a whole different motion style, not exactly like either, but a mix. Another preference. Here's another example I generated. First row, only Light X 2V, very basic text to video, nothing special. Second row, MPS for both high and low noise. Third row, HPS for both. Let's check out the results. HPS gives more camera movement and feels more dynamic, even if it's a bit unrealistic, like stepping on a rock and jumping over to a bridge, then running back. All three use the same prompt and settings. MPS in this side-by-side -side is clearly better than Light X 2V alone. And in this case, I actually prefer MPS. The HPS version feels a bit too exaggerated. It's more natural, walking, stepping onto the bridge slowly, being cautious. I like how MPS handles it here. The Light X 2V version? Kind of static, kind of boring, just running in one direction, no face visible, camera just following the object. So as I mentioned, you can mix and match, use MPS for high noise and HPS for low noise. In the third row, I'll try the opposite. HPS for high noise, MPS for low noise. And you'll see the result is different from what we just saw. Let's run it again. No changes to the prompt or seed, just the LoRa settings. And here are the results. All three videos follow the same direction. The character running around the temple as per the prompt. First one, Light X 2V, very normal. Second one, MPS high noise plus HPS low noise. Already better than Light X 2V. More details like broken bridges and temple elements added to the scene. Third one, HPS high noise plus MPS low noise. Even though it's a different combo, the motion style is similar, but when you switch high and low noise, you can see how each model influences the output. For example, when MPS is used in low noise, the coloration feels richer than when it's in high noise. In this case, I actually prefer mixing them, HPS for high noise and MPS for low noise. The colors pop more and the overall temple scene looks better than the second one. Here's another test. Same prompt, different seed, light X2 V only, just the basic jumping motion. Second row, MPS high noise plus HPS low noise, mixing the two reward Loris again. Third row, HPS high noise plus MPS low noise. You can see the character's look and motion are consistent. Same sampling steps. 
But when MPS is in low noise, the quality feels better. The character looks nicer. The jump and climb motion is smoother. Arms stretch out more. It just feels more enhanced compared to when MPS is in high noise and HPS in low. So far, that's what I've noticed when mixing the two Loras. Personally, if you want to go beyond the standard setup, using both models in pairs, try mixing them. The safe way is to use the same model for both high and low noise. But when you mix them, you get way more variety. Here's another example. Same jumping motion, stunt style. First, MPS for both. Second, HPS for both. Using the safe paired approach. Still, overall, I prefer HPS after all this testing. MPS is great for certain motions, but with WAN 2.2, the ability to mix high and low noise models opens up so many more combinations. It's totally different from 2.1, where you could only pick one reward model. So check it out, play around with different combos. I'd say it's way more fun than just sticking to the same pair. And try different shift numbers. It'll let the reward Loris give you even more varied results. Anyway, that's it for today. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.